again uh, to those of you who are here in person and to those of you who are joining us uh, online. Um, I am Magda Tedder. I'm the Schiller Chair in Judaic Studies at Fordham University and a co-director of Fordham Center for Jewish Studies. I wanted to welcome you uh, to Fordham, to the Walsh Family Library, and um, to the Henry Miller Judaica Research Room, which opened uh, a year ago in October and provides a unique space to present Jewish art, material culture, alongside our more traditional Judaica collection. I started the full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2000, uh, 2022. Fordham Center for Jewish Studies immediately partnered with the American Academy for Jewish Research and the New York Public Library to offer a remote fellowship program for Ukrainian scholars in Jewish studies who are affected by the war. We supported 12 scholars, and Evgeny Kotlia, an artist, designer, curator, and a scholar with an impressive artistic and scholarly portfolio, was among them. When I learned more about Evgeny's work, and saw his vibrant and evocative stained glass designs, I immediately wanted our Fordham community to see them. The opening of the Henry S. Miller Daika Research Room made it possible. As the war has been uh, raging on, Evgeny generously agreed to select the artwork and share it with us as files that we would print uh, to present here uh, at Fordham. He wrote introductory texts and captions, and we hoped that he would be able to join us in New York, but of course the current war made it impossible. I am truly grateful to Evgeny for his willing, willingness to have this exhibit at Fordham, curated from afar as the war was on. We share here with you his impressive work including the unfortunately never implemented designs for stained glass windows from the Kharkiv Choral Synagogue, 1995, and he'll tell us more about it. They focus the theme of Jewish holidays, and as the exhibit opens just days before the high holidays of 2023, and will st stay open until Hanukkah, we made them the centerpieces of our exhibit. And those of you who are joining us online can see uh, the shot uh, of the room of the gallery on, that, on those pieces. Um, in Evgeny Kotler's artistic vision, the stained glass window projects the light, turns the metaphysical, as he says, into physical, materializes the speculative image, and ultimately, fills the prayer with color and light. Since the Henry Miller Judaica Research Group seeks to connect student research with our collection, I shared Evgeny's powerful images with Mia Moody, an undergraduate student from Fordham at Lincoln Center, uh, who was assigned intern in the library. Mia, who had taken my Eastern European Jewish history class last spring, and is also an art history major, in, during her internship chose images from medieval Hebrew illuminated manuscripts and placed them in conversation with Evgeny's uh, art, uh, artwork. This project 
I did not realize that it would take a large village to turn the idea into of an art exhibit into a reality, especially across the ocean with a war waging. I'm therefore grateful to so many people who made it possible. We're especially grateful to Linda Loschiavo, the director of Fordham Libraries, been extremely supportive um, of the idea in general of having a Judaica research room and also of the exhibit and made it a reality. She marshaled library resources to help us prepare the room for the exhibit. Gabriela Di Melio and Vivian Shen of the Special Collections um, and Archives helped with various logistics and supported student research and, and prepared the display of books. Maggie Coyne, Seth Knight, and Nicole Zayden shepherded us through the mounting of the exhibit, and Seth Knight, with his team from Ramprint, did literally miracles under pressure to make sure we can see the exhibit today. This exhibition is made possible thanks to the generosity of so many people. And I want to mention the decades-long generosity to Fordham of its trustee, Henry S. Miller, after whom the Judaica Research Room is named and his ongoing cheerleading efforts um, uh, on our behalf. Dr. Bruce Beal, Dr. Eugene Schwidler, and, and many anonymous donors to the center uh, whose gifts covered the costs of making this idea uh, of bringing Evgeny Goter's work to compass a reality. Through the generosity of Dr. James Peach, Fordham is home to one of the most comprehensive collections of medieval manuscript facsimiles. The power of the illuminated Hebrew manuscripts is now on display together with Evgeny Kotler's design. And those of you here will see it on the way and the cases on the way to the gallery. Evgeny's exhibit is titled The Light of the Revival. And as Dr. Eva Freimovich from the University of Leeds has noted, stained glass windows are the most luminous and ethereal, yet also the most fragile portion of a synagogue building. They are the first casualty of pogroms, wars, and revolutions. King's design illuminates synagogues that were once neglected and left in sorrowful disrepair. They now provide light and inspiration, and in this difficult moment of war and destruction, they provide hope for a renewal of life and return of brilliant light after this dark, dark war ends. On the eve of higher holidays, they offer a meaningful inspiration. So before I turn over the screen to Evgeny, uh, who is joining us on Zoom through, uh, from Ukraine, I want to uh, introduce John Wright, who teaches um, uh, at Barnard in the Slavic department and holds PhD in Russian literature from Colombia and is a specialist in 19th and 20th century poetry. His current research interests include Ukrainian poets Lina Kostienko and Volodymyr Svidinsky. And he will help us uh, interpret questions um, uh, from audience here and the, uh, there um, across, uh, across the ocean. So, uh, Evgeny, the screen is yours. Uh, good day, everyone. Uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, dear friends and colleagues. Uh, first of all, I would like to express my gratitude uh, to the Center for Jewish Studies at Fordham University and personally Professor Magda Tether for organizing this exhibition and supporting Ukrainian Jewish scholars who have been affected by the ongoing Russian war in Ukraine. Uh, now uh, I want to start my presentation. Oh, that's well. Uh, <clears throat> this exhibition is a great support, not only for me, uh, but for the whole of Ukraine in its current war with Russia and its struggle for freedom and independence. Today is an exciting moment for me for two reasons. Firstly, the attention of the whole world is currently turned to Ukraine, and for all of us, uh, this is a huge historical chance to present our history and culture, and in my case, it is an opportunity uh, to share my stained glass design for instituted synagogues of independent Ukraine. 
Secondly, today more than ever, I feel a living connection with all those uh, who over the course of my life uh, have played a role in shaping me and my work leading up to this moment, in particular with uh, my Jewish family, teachers uh, and my colleagues. Uh, I dedicated uh, this exhibition to the blessed memory of my teacher and mentor, Professor Alexander Pronin, the founder of the stained glass school in Eastern Ukraine, who taught me the art of stained glass and supported my creative and scientific interest in the Jewish theme all the years. I would like to give special thanks uh, to Yevgeny Ziskind, Executive Director of the Association of Jewish Re Religious Organization of Ukraine, for his kind assistance in preparing the exhibition and catalog, and uh, my colleague, uh, graphic designer, my colleague um, uh, from uh, Kharkiv uh, State Academy and design of Design and Arts, uh, Valery Galchenko, for the amazing design of the uh, exhibition catalog. And so, uh, the light of the revival. It all started 30 years ago. In 1993, I was a student at the Department of Monumental and Decorative Art of the Kharkiv Art and Industrial Institute and was looking for an architectural structure for my course project. Quite, uh, quite uh, uh, consciously, I chose the building of the Kharkiv Choral Synagogue uh, because even uh, then I participated in the Jewish youth movement and began to study the Jewish tradition. The synagogue had recently been returned to the Jewish community and was undergoing renovations. When inside, I raised my head up toward where the dome was rising and seeing the uh, crumbling plaster, I said uh, to myself, oh, I would create, uh, create something like the Sistine Chapel by great Michelangelo here. Uh, now I think that at that time I was driven not only by ambition, but uh, also uh, by a reasonable understanding of the task at hand. Only many years later did I realize uh, that abyss uh, that lay between me, as well uh, as the previous generations of post-World War II Jewry, and the great Jewish culture from which the Soviet regime had cut us off. The chasm was even more palpable regarding the architectural and artistic tradition. The 1990s saw a boom in the restitution and restoration of historical synagogue buildings. Difficulties with their return were combined with the problems of the revival of Jewish religious life, the economic crisis, uh, and the absolute unfamiliarity uh, with what a kosher, uh, a kosher synagogue should, like, uh, should look like. Uh, what is prescribed, uh, what is forbidden, where and to what extent, uh, uh, extent uh, creativity can be shown. We were still behind the Iron Curtain. The reconstruction of each local synagogue was a complex process, uh, which in the uh, early days, uh, entailed choosing a strategy, making compromises and fighting with the authorities, the community and donors. Only later, at the turn of the new millennium, when cultural and foreign exchanges intensified, books and specialists from abroad appeared, did the architectural and artistic aspects of their construction come on the agenda. In the first decade of the 21st century, the era of the revitalization of synagogues began in earnest. The happy coincidence of place and time gave me a very opportunity to prove myself in this and uh, uh, other areas uh, of Jewish object design. But it was the stained glass windows with their light and emotional power uh, that illuminated my further path in Judaic art. Beginning in the 19th, 1990s, a spiritual life was reviving in Ukraine, and it became necessary to return the houses of worship to a full life, and denominations needed specialists. Like me, other artists and designers are uh, taking the same course in which I designed uh, the stained glass windows uh, for the Choral Synagogue in Kharkiv, defending their graduation project, focusing on designing stained glass windows for other synagogues of Orthodox and Catholic churches. 
and represented a real renaissance of uh, sacred art. We were all brought together, taught and inspired uh, by the head of our department, the famous, the famous master of stained glass, Professor Alexander Pronin, who starting in the 1960s himself recovered and in fact uh, uh, rediscovered the art and technology of stained glass uh, in the eastern Ukraine. As a student, uh, under his uh, guidance, I made my first stained glass window for a university in Kharkiv, which became the prologue to my synagogue uh, chapter. The ability of a stained glass window uh, not only to decorate a sacred space, but also in a certain sense to physically materialize the divine light in symbols, images, meanings, and most importantly, in vivid emotions has been adopted by the Catholic Church since the Middle Ages. In modern time, this tradition entered uh, the space of the synagogue with the advent of the reform movement in the 19th century, when synagogues began to seek aesthetical authority with churches. During Kristallnacht, a thousand of windows in synagogues were shuttered across Europe. With them destroyed uh, in Europe not only countless uh, uh, beautiful uh, stained glass windows, but also the very memory of this recent tradition. The new aesthetic tradition survived uh, in Jewish communities across the ocean, especially in the United States, and was later revived uh, in post-war Europe, but not in the countries uh, of the former Soviet bloc. They were discovered uh, only in the 1990s, and the exhibition captures that moment. Despite here are historical photos and designs of synagogues, sketches of stained glass windows, as well as photographs of completed works. Together, the artistic images in connection with the larger historical context unfold a broad perspective of how Ukrainian synagogues were reborn. Two early works shown here were uh, the first samples of stained glass designs for modern Ukrainian synagogues, and they set a new trend. The exhibition is based on three sets of stained glass windows, uh, which were designed and uh, virtually implemented in Ukrainian synagogues in the period from 1995 to uh, 2005. The first of them, the stained glass windows for the Kharkiv Choral Synagogue uh, on the theme of uh, uh, Jewish holidays, uh, was intended for the windows of the side facades and used wide decorative glazing of the prayer hall. The second project, an ensemble of stained glass windows for the Kiev Podil Synagogue, focuses uh, on places of the land of Israel and the tribes of Israel. Uh, they now adopt the east wall, creating a rich color and light frame of the old and restored uh, Torah Ark. Finally, uh, the, the third work, Jerusalem and the Tribes of Israel, a part of the original design of the Torah Ark itself, including its pediment and side wings, was realized in the Galitska Synagogue in Kiev. Uh, the first one uh, is Hakif uh, Choral Synagogue. The Hakev Chor uh, Choral Synagogue was built in 1913, according to the design by the renowned uh, St. Petersburg architect Yakov Vivirts. After the Bolshevik Revolution of 1917, the policy of militant atheism in the early Soviet epoch led to the nationalization of places of worship. In 1923, the Choral Synagogue was closed and became successively the Jewish uh, uh, workers' club, a uh, children's cinema, and after uh, World War II, a sports society. In 1990, in 1990, at the end of the Soviet era, the building was handed over to the Jewish community of the city, and the long process of its restoration began. The restored Choral Synagogue in Hakiv was inaugurated in 2003. And now the uh, stained glass design for the prayer hall. The Jewish Holidays uh, stained glass project for the Happy Choral Synagogue was developed in 1995 uh, as my BA diploma project uh, at the Department of Monumental and Decorative Painting of the Happy Art and Industrial Institute. I had begun my work on this uh, topic two years earlier with the first sketches trying to get uh, acquainted with the Jewish artistic tradition in the almost complete absence of information and uh, competent professionals uh, in Ukraine. 
We synagogue being returned to the communities and reconstructed after decades of communist rule, everyone had the same questions. I thus studied the rules and traditions of synagogue decorations, and my research won the Grand Prix at the All Ukrainian Competition of Student Works in 1995. My focus was always on the light source, both physical and spiritual. The placement of windows, uh, their size and their shape, determine not only the illumination, but also the emotional impact of the space, which stained glass is able to transform. Connecting the spiritual with the material works like this. Uh, passing through the visual images, the light stream fills uh, the prayer space with symbols and expression, thus spiritualizing it. The binding of these images to the cardinal points and architecture secularizes the space as a place of the descent of the Shekhina, divine presence, during prayer, which enhances the kavana, the prayerful intention, the mood of the heart. Studying the monuments of traditional Jewish art, I also did reduced for myself its general visual, visual formula, in which three components are combined, the ornament, plot, and font, as the link text and meanings uh, in a single decorative field. The project itself included the development of stained glass windows for the side facades of the prayer hall. Above, at the level of the women's gallery, thematic stained glass windows uh, were offered, five on each side and below, at the level of the men's uh, portier, they were stylistically supported by small decorative stained glass windows. Uh, the program of stained glass design, the choice of symbols and inscriptions corresponding to the spiritual tradition of Judaism, was developed in collaboration with the Israeli rabbi Daniel Lapan. With his assistance, uh, Rabbi Shapira from Jerusalem, a well-known expert on the Torah, compiled uh, the arrangement of holidays, inscriptions and quotes from the Torah, uh, which united the entire stained glass ensemble. According to this order, on the right hand of the Torah Ark were compositions of five holidays in the order in which they are mentioned in the Torah, from uh, right to left. Shabbat, uh, Saturday, uh, Rosh Chodesh, New Moon, um, Pesach, Exodus uh, of the Jews from Egypt, uh, Shavuot, Day of the Giving uh, of the Torah, and uh, Sukkot, uh, Feast of Tabernacle. Uh, the last three make up the complex of Shalosh Regalim, festivals during which pilgrimage to the Jerusalem Temple were made. The first wall of stained glass windows corresponded to the saying for, from the Torah that passed uh, through all five windows, saying that these holidays were established by the Almighty. I quote, Those are the same times of the Lord that you shall celebrate as sacred occasions. Uh, Leviticus uh, chapter uh, 23, verse uh, 37. For the left side of the ark was to be adorned with stained glass windows uh, depicting the main holidays mentioned in the Tanakh, as well as those established by the Sanhedrin, the great rabbinic assembly, in the calendar sequence. Tisha Be'af, day of mourning, uh, the destruction of the Jerusalem temple, Rosh Hashanah, um, New Year, Yom Kippur, uh, Judgment Day, Hanukkah, uh, the liberation of the Jews from the Greek uh, conquerors uh, in a symbolic victory of monotheism over paganism, and Purim, uh, the miraculous salvation of the Jews uh, from destruction. These stained glass windows appear under a verse from the Torah, I quote, so Moses declared uh, to the Israelites uh, the sad times of Lord. Leviticus uh, chapter 23, uh, verse 44. The structure of the inscriptions and plots uh, corresponds uh, to different levels of uh, Torah comp comprehensions. Uh, the uh, simplest is the names and symbols of the holiday is a circle, reflecting the history, attributes, and spiritual aspects. Uh, more complex are the inscriptions above the circles with symbols reflecting co concepts of Judaism, which reveal through the corresponding holiday the rela relationship of the Almighty with the world and the Jewish people. 
Uh, the most complex and integral level are the quotes from the Torah woven into the structure of the stained glass windows. The letters between the handles uh, of the scrolls and the lancet arc uh, and the top, reminiscent of the silhouette of the dome of this synagogue. They correspond uh, to the uh, sense to the Torah itself, where the meanings uh, are hidden not only in the content of the text, but also in various combinations of letters, words, and expressions that reveal its core structure and deep secret meanings. This verse uh, summarizes the spiritual meanings and origin of the holidays. And this was carried out under the guidance of Professor Alexander Pronin, who helped to with the technical part of the project's implementation. In addition to the sketches, I developed a full-size cardboard uh, of the shovel to window, a uh, one half meter high, and a section as a stained glass window. The project uh, was bought uh, from the Institute by the, uh, by the then leadership of the Chorus Synagogue, exhibited in the reconstructed prayer hall, and presented to the Jewish community and citizens. However, in 1998, uh, a fire in the synagogue destroyed uh, the entire project. Also, photographs uh, of the project survived. The project was not implemented when the prayer hall opened in 2003. We're showing here the lost designs. Next one um, is a Kiev Podil synagogue. This synagogue is the oldest functioning synagogue in the Ukrainian capital. This synagogue was erected uh, in 1894, uh, 1895, at the expense of the merchant Gabriel Yakov Rosenberg as a private mansion. It was adopted for a prayer hall on later. It was built in the brick style with elements of Moorish decor by Mikola Gardenian. The Soviet authorities closed the synagogue uh, in 1929 and just tra transformed it uh, into a workers' club. After the end of World War II, uh, it was renovated and reopened uh, as a synagogue with a new Torah arc. During 2001, uh, 2003, uh, it underwent another construction to return the buildings to the original plan of uh, uh, 1894 and turned it into an exquisite and presentable synagogue residence of the uh, chief rabbi uh, of Ukraine. Uh, there were sketches for the stained glass windows and plafond murals. I prepared uh, the first sketches of the stained glass windows for the Kiev Real Synagogue long before the main work on the design on the, of the entire interior. I wanted to get a sense uh, and to fit the space, its proportions uh, and style. One of the surviving beautiful drawings of the interior shows my early approach to the layout and interior design, where stained glass windows were used for the windows of the entire prayer hall. The set of images of Jewish ceremonial objects, menorah, sefer Torah, or uh, samim, an incense um, container consecrating the separation of Shabbat from everyday life, and others uh, were developed uh, for all site windows. I used uh, examples from Jewish manuscripts or historical photographs of ritual uh, objects uh, as prototypes. In my approach, I was guided by the artist and rabbi David Hillman, the author of stained glass windows in many synagogues in Great Britain, including the impressive stained glass windows at the Wilson Museum of Jewish Art, housed in the Great Synagogue in Jerusalem, with the intricate plots, ribbons with inscriptions, and technical excellence. Uh, I saw this uh, in 1994 uh, in Israel during my first uh, trip uh, to the um, Holy Land. Uh, in the early sketch uh, of the monochrome painting of the plafond, I wanted to show the richness of symbolism in traditional Jewish art in Eastern Europe. I saw these symbols in old photographs of wooden synagogue murals I found in Ukrainian archives. The old synagogues did not survive the Holocaust, and their iconographic legacy had become forgotten. 
Such images, uh, images uh, as three fish or three hairs in a circle, a battle between a lion and a unicorn, <clears throat> an elephant with a tower on its back, uh, bear scaling a bunch of grapes, Leviathan and the bull, a show, uh, and others were popular in the 18th century, but became rare in the synagogues uh, uh, by the turn of the 19th and 20th centuries. Other images, such as for animals, which are symbols of Jewish piety uh, from the uh, Mishnahi Tratais Pirke Award, retained their popularity until the 20th century. Uh, remaining uh, in the tondons, uh, tondas uh, on the ceiling of the synagogue. The opened uh, flo uh, flower with Megan David, the Star of David, uh, in the center of the plafond came uh, to resemble a rose, a bouquet, uh, a wreath from the old synagogue's murals, as a floral symbol of uh, the supreme being, giving life and resonating with some cosmological symbolism. Although these sketches were not ultimately uh, accepted, they were part of the process of preparation for the main work. Uh, stained glass windows uh, for the eastern wall of the prayer hall. During a full-scale construction of the synagogue in 2000-2003, uh, Israel designer Aaron Ostreker conceived uh, of in installing stained glass windows in the main vestibule of the synagogue and the eastern wall of the prayer hall. Uh, the Sim uh, uh, Kiev jury, named later Kiev Suit, was selected for the vestibule uh, with three windows, traditional jury, Babin Yar, and uh, Jewish revival. A theme called the Places of the Land of Israel and the Tribes of Israel uh, was chosen uh, to decorate the windows of the prayer hall. Uh, their goal uh, was to emphasize the symbolic unity of uh, all worshippers uh, facing east toward Jerusalem, and their connection with the Holy Land. Uh, the four windows at the top show uh, the Holy Landscapes of Israel, the Ruling Wall and the Jerusalem Temple, symbolizing the connection between Biblical and Messianic times, the uh, Patriarch's uh, tomb in Hebron, and the uh, racial tomb near Bethlehem. All subjects uh, were framed and united uh, by motifs uh, of the Old Jerusalem Gates. Uh, in the upper part of the lancet windows, the main attributes of Judaism were depicted in the rays of radiance, the crown of the Torah, the Torah scroll, uh, the seven branch menorah, and the shofar uh, ram's horn. Stylistically, uh, they equipped uh, the horseshoe-shaped tops of the two lower windows with Magen David, and the tablets of the covenant with the symbols of the Ten commandment, Commandments. The ten tribes of Israel was symbolized by the images uh, with which ja Jacob associated each of uh, his sons with his testament and blessing, according to Genesis uh, chapter uh, 49, uh, verses 1 to uh, 27. The color and graphic solution of the stained glass windows in the white interior created a bright frame of the wooden tower arc on the eastern wall. The stained glass windows uh, were cra crafted with traditional technology, with painting and uh, firing glass using a lit mounting profile in the Krakow stained glass workshop, with the participation of my friends Gennady Meroninko and Volodymyr Predatko. They were installed in the synagogue in November 2002. Um, and uh, the last synagogue uh, is a uh, Galitska Synagogue in Kiev. Uh, this synagogue, located uh, near the old Galitska Square and Jewish Market, was built in 1909 by the architect Fedir Oltarzewski in the modernized Romanesque style. This synagogue was uh, shattered by the Soviet authorities in 1930 and became part of the complex of the Kiev electrotechnical plant. Uh, in 1901, uh, the building was returned to the Kyiv Jewish religious community, allowing for the workshop activities to resume. Uh, and in, uh, in uh, 2002 uh, to 2004, uh, the building was renovated, and uh, it is now home to the International Educational Center, Midrasha Zayanit. Stained glass windows for the Torah Ark. 
The wooden cabinet for the toilet scrolls was created before the stained glass windows were installed. To accommodate the stained glass uh, pieces with two symmetrical wings, uh, each uh, with a six uh, rectangular opening were created. The Torah arc uh, was reinforced with a white uh, entablature on two columns, with a semicircular pediment with carved decor on top. The arc was designed to fit into the silhouette of the semicircular apse uh, niche on the eastern wall, becoming the main focus of the entire prayer hall. The inscription of the protruding part of the entablature, I quote, for out of Zion shall the Torah come forth, uh, from uh, Isaiah uh, chapter 2, uh, verse 3, turned the Torah arc from a place uh, of storage of the Torah scroll or Torah scrolls into a symbolic gate to the land of Israel. The seam of the tribes of Israel was chosen for the stained glass windows to be placed in the two wings placed on each side of the Torah arc, according to Jacob's uh, deathbed blessing of his sons, uh, according to uh, Genesis chapter 49. The semicircular stained glass window for the pediment in turn was to depict the Jerusalem temple with stylized motifs of uh, city building and uh, Jewish tombs uh, of the Mount of Olives, uh, forming a collective landscape of Jerusalem with a temple in the center. The stained glass design was based on the model of the second temple from the reconstruction of Jerusalem in 66 CE, now located in the Israel Museum in Jerusalem. Symbolically, the stained glass decorations united the theme of biblical and messianic Israel when all the tribes will gather and as uh, one people uh, in the land of Israel and the temple of Jerusalem on Mount Moriah will be restored. Like the uh, stained glass in the portal synagogue, or the Galitska synagogue uh, stained glass windows were crafted using traditional technology with glass firing and a lead assembly profile in uh, the Hakif stained glass studio with the participation of Gennady Mironenko. This was the first case in Ukraine when the Torah art design was created using a stained glass ensemble. Uh, so, these uh, three projects uh, offer different approaches uh, to the use of stained glass in synagogue interior design and three different strategies for the sacralization of the prayer space by means of stained glass art. Uh, what is created uh, as a result uh, is a new perception of sacred space and a new experience of self-perception. Self, uh, in my artistic vision, the stained glass window projects the light that turns uh, the metaphysical into the physical, materializes the speculative image, and ultimately fills the prayer with color and light. As an artist uh, as, uh, and as a Jew, uh, I have experienced uh, uh, this uh, in full just recently. The full-scale Russian invasion forced me and my family to hastily uh, evacuate from my native Kharkiv uh, at the beginning on March uh, 2022, uh, first to Lviv and then to Kyiv. That year, <coughs> I, ex uh, I experienced uh, the high holidays in the Kyiv uh, synagogue in Podil, uh, the synagogue for which I created uh, the stained glass windows uh, exactly two decades earlier. For the first time in all these years, I looked at the stained glass windows uh, precisely in the, uh, in the same as the members of uh, the community see them in prayerful union with the Almighty. The natural course of the day changed the light, which revived and renewed the images, creating a special mystical fullness of the space. I looked at my work and I and, uh, was uh, infinitely uh, delighted with and grateful uh, for my participation in this world. Thank you very much.